So hello, my name's Rob and this is Cattle Rabbit Scout Model Studios. And in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at these modular movement trays from Warhammer The Old World, kindly sent to me by Games Workshop. Now, I've never had movement trays before. I've played Age of Sigmar. I vaguely remember some, some little clear ones coming out for Armageddon a few years ago, but like this is a very new concept to me. So in this video, we're just gonna have a look at what you get in the box, how modular they actually are, and I'm also going to talk you through how I put them together as I think the instructions maybe could be just a little bit better. As always, like and subscribe and let's just get started. Okay, so movement trays. Um, cool box, you get a really big box of it. I was actually surprised how big these were. Um, these are, once again, modular trays, so you're supposed to cut these down and I thought we'd have a little bit of a look. Now, what you've got here is you've got an eight by eight grid of 25 mils, or you've got a 10 by 10 grid of 20 mils. So potentially squares alone, you've got uh, 220 mil based miniatures there. Um, kind of cool. If not, you've just got the best Dungeons and Dragons tiles out of the box that um, probably I've seen so far. Nice. <laughs> Nice square grid, so there's an idea for you. D&D tiles by Games Workshop. Um, but I, I really like the idea of these, and obviously you're going to be shifting a lot of units around in the old world. So I think these probably are a bit of a must-have, especially if you're doing a horde army. As you can see here, you've got your straight edges and your corners. Now, you don't put edges on the back, as you'll see a little bit later on, and they do have this little lip on there. So you can actually do 16 trays per box as that's how many corners you've got you should get 32 corners but obviously you need two for each so 16 trays now the instructions themselves like i said a bit bare bones and i actually think these are an older instruction if you know let me know in the comments below please um obviously you mark them you score them you snap them now there is something i'm going to address later on regarding that and then you stick your corners on, you put your straight edges on, and you you know you, you cut down your, your middle sections if you need to. Here you can see he's using a, a razor saw or a pad saw, um, which is a product Games Workshop don't sell. It's rare for them to not show products that they don't sell in the thing. This is what makes, makes me wanna believe that they are slightly older instructions. And they're, they're quite vague in some places. I do feel the instructions could be a little bit better so that's why I did want to go over them so here are the sheets once again um, these measure 25 by 25 these are for your bigger infantry models and then you've got your 20 by 20 these will be things like your skeletons and your smaller units goblins probably so once again <laughs> I'm just gonna throw this out there first thing I looked at and I was like wow Dungeons and Dragons tiles. So you could actually cut these and make corridors, rooms, and things like that. And it's great, it's already done. 25 by 25 is actually your five foot, which is the measurement of Dungeons and Dragons, for those that don't know. And there it is, really, really like <laughs> tiles out the done. I thought that was quite good. Um, but let's have a look at how to do them. Okay, so I've got this sheet here, and the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my bases. Here I'm using 25 by 25s, and I'm just gonna pop them on. Now, because these have grooves in between them, I do find that the, the bases kind of stick out just that little bit more than the actual grooves. So using a pencil, what I do is, and the reason why I've put the bases on there, and I'm also gonna be using this steel ruler, is, I'm just gonna mark the edge of where they go. Obviously I know the shape that I want, that's the reason why I've done this, and I'm just gonna mark all the way down. Now, what I want to try and avoid doing is having wastage. So and I'm gonna show you what I mean just here. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a hobby knife and using a stool ruler as a guide, I'm just gonna score down each side, each cut that I've I've made each time just a few times to try and cut through. What this should do is snap. Now, I only need a two by five to give me 10 units. 
here you can see that I'm repeating the process on the shorter side. Now, if I go to actually bend it, you can see that it's not kind of pulling away. If that's the case, get your ruler again and make a couple more passes on your grooves. I can't stress this enough. Just keep scoring at it. Don't worry. Now, what I did find is scoring it multiple times was was great but if you do go slightly out you get a bit of a wonky cut so i actually kind of use my blade almost at a 45 degree angle to kind of scrape a channel just a little bit deeper than what i wanted now if i try and break this you can see that it's starting to come apart there because you can see the, the white of the plastic now the reason why it does this is because the size is a rod i'm actually scoring right through the back of the 20 mils so it's a little bit tougher so while these are quite robust, and you can see here that I'm not all the way through just yet. And the other problem I've got is that you can't just cut off what you need. So you need to be a little bit smart on how you do your cuts. Now, I've got an eight by eight grid here. So because I've used two, that means I've got a six by five. So I'm gonna score this line down here that you can see on screen. I do apologize if I'm not explaining myself the best on this section and I'm gonna score it because that way I can snap it. You need to score down fully. Don't try and snap it halfway into the sheet as it will just rip the plastic. So that's something to be quite aware of. So you do need to think, because now I'm left with a three by eight and a six by five. So I'm trying just not to minimalize wastage here. So here it is, this is my, my bit. And you can see here, if I line it up against my bases, that the actual, because I, what I was saying about the bases being slightly um, bigger, because of the way I've done my cut, I've left a little bit of excess room. Don't worry too much, as the actual um, corner sections, they also have a, a little bit of a gap. So they don't sit completely tight with each other. So you're not kind of like trying to force bases in, but I do find having that little bit more movement by making your cuts on the outside, um, probably definitely help. I don't know how much that's gonna do for um, the other side because obviously I've now got less room to play with, but you do get a little bit of play with the um, corner and the straight sections. So all I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna line up. And now these have contact points on them because these are like a hard plastic kind of, almost like bumper that goes around them. If you don't trim them dead flat, you can see like in the model here, no matter which way I push it down, it ends up being a little bit wonky. That's because of the contact points. So what I would always advise with this is make sure you take the time, and you can see here that I've just glued on my first corner. I've just used Tamiya Extra Thin Cement to make sure that the ends are completely flat. Because otherwise it's just not gonna sit straight and level. And it, I know it's only a movement tray, it's a it's a function really as opposed to a game piece but people do paint these up and they're really cool um, but as you can see here i'm just going to take the time to file that dead flat so my straight piece can butt right up against it you do still get a gap because of the way they're molded and as you can see how i've glued it in i'm now going to repeat the same process here for the the extra corner but if you've got any flashing or any bit of sprue that you haven't trimmed off can cause a little bit problems and while movement trays once again are good and it is a function you don't really want wonky movement trays so just a little tip there take the time to make sure that you you are filing your ends as you can see here i've got a little bit of a gap because obviously it was cut a little bit wonky but i have cut on the outside of the um the grid so hopefully i have got a, a bit more room to kind of work with and all i'm going to do once again i'm not being shy with the extra thin cement here same again, I'm also gonna put a bit on the ends as well, so when it butts up together, and then literally, I'm just gonna hold it in place for a couple of seconds, making sure that it's straight with the front of the uh, bumper. I'm gonna call them bumpers, I don't know the technical terms, but like the little lip. For the sides, what we need to do is put them in place, and I have made sure that they're all trimmed up straight away so they sit dead against it. There's no point not trimming up the flashing, marking it, trimming the flashing and find out that it doesn't go at the end and you've got a little bit of you know sticking out. 
but what I am going to do with the pencil, I'm going to cut either side of it. So I'm not going to cut dead on the line, and that's because it is easier to take away than it is to add back on. Now on screen here, you can see that I've got a little razor saw. These, I think this was about eight pound from Hobbycraft in the UK. They're not that expensive. This isn't a particularly good one. I've had it quite a few years. It's a bit battered, but they do go through plastic quite quickly. And you can see here, I've left the whole footage. This is me cutting through this piece of plastic. It doesn't take long at all. But once again, I'm cutting the other side of my mark. Once again, you can take off, but you can't put back on. And the last thing you want is to cut these edges, or if you are doing a extra long kind of one at the front, trimming these down. As you can see here, it hangs off a little bit at the end. That's perfect for what we need. The other thing, as I will say, is the little bit that you're stuck with in the middle and you're left with, keep it. Because if you ever go to do another train, you need an extra little bit in the middle, you've got it. Waste not, what not. Then all I do is I get a file and I just file back the edges by holding it nice and flat and making sure that I'm, I'm going in line with the back of the movement tray. And that's really it. That's all there is to it. The instructions are quite vague. It's not as difficult as what it sounds and you are probably going to be building a few of these if you're using them. I'm sure everyone's got their own methods. This is mine. Then all I'm going to do is pop my bases in, as you can see. Now, if you do find that yours is a little bit bouncy in the middle, I flipped mine over and as you can see on screen now, I've glued a one mil thick bit of plastic card to the back so it can't be pushed down. So it just holds a little bit more rigid, which I find actually gave me a slightly better result. So if you are doing a big block of stuff, I'd recommend doing that. But look, I hope that helps. Any questions, let me know in the comments below. That's it from me in this one. Movement trays, I kind of like them. I think they're goofy, but I like them. I'll see you all next time. God bless and take care.